Hello again, bicycle friends. This is Andy Q in the Bike Farmer Workshop. Here we are with another entry level Trek mountain bike. 26 inch, linear pull brakes. Um, it's old school, but these make great all arounder bikes for kids. This one has very flat tires. It's pretty filthy, but looks to be complete and things are rolling and things are moving and shaking. So I think it's gonna be okay. We just gotta go through it. I'm gonna narrate this one. So I'll tell you what I'm doing and what I'm thinking about while I'm doing it. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. I think we'll start this one out just by taking a little walk around and looking at a few things. You can see how dirty things are back here. This one's been ridden in the dirt a little bit. I don't mind that at all. Um, I'm not too worried about this little bit of rust on the freewheel. Tires are super flat. You know, the first thing I'm gonna do is put some air in them and hopefully it doesn't leak out. You can see the saddle. I checked these, uh, the, the saddle, the position in the saddle. See how it's kinda all the way back. That makes me think that this bolt might be a little loose. So I'll loosen that up, slide the saddle forward and tighten it back down. Overall, the saddle looks to be in okay condition. It's a little bent or something here in the front. I don't know, I think it's a keeper. You get this bracket, this lock bracket off of there. The bottle cage actually fits pretty well. Um, there's some paint that is rubbed off here on the logos. I'm gonna try to get that off with some goo gone. Um, I checked the, short, uh, the, the shock, the shork. They should call them shorks. I checked that on, uh, on the ground before I put it up in the stand and it's still working. So we'll leave that on there. You can see the brake pads are still in decent shape. I just don't even think I'm gonna need to replace anything. Um, these shifters, I felt those before and they're kind of working. I don't know, it doesn't wanna focus. Yeah, so what, we're gonna squirt some uh, tri-flow up in there, I think. Um, maybe some one-step. I'm kind of running low on one-step. I should order some. All right, I'm gonna put you back on the tripod. So often, my very first step on any bike is just to put air in the tires. Um, I do that because it gives things a chance to lose air. So when I do my final check, I'll squeeze them and see if they've lost any air. Oh, the kitties are fighting in the other room. Okay, I'm seeing a little bit of a, a hop. It's not quite seated. You know, when the bikes sit like this and lose air, the tires unseat themselves. So I only fill them up halfway. I didn't fill it up all the way. Just give it some shape and let things decide where they want to live and help them along if you have to. There, just put a good amount of air in there. I'm, I'm pulling back and forth on the wheel here and I can feel that rear hub is just a little loose. So that's something to take a look at once we get it off the bike, which will be the next step, I'm sure. Get some air in this front one quick. Yeah, about halfway and I can see there's a spot, so. We'll go through and help this find its home. Oh yeah. Back and forth, all the way around, just kind of massaging it. There we go. Pretty close to perfect. Close as we'll get. I'm gonna disconnect the rear brake here. Flip open the lever. So the lever, when I felt it, wasn't real, it wasn't, the wheel wasn't on there real tight. And when you adjust the hubs, you can set the preload. You, you want a little bit of play in the hubs. Probably not quite as much as this one has, so. 
I'll probably just cheat. I'm going to grab I'm gonna grab an adjustable wrench and a 17 and I'll bring you over to the bench here so you can see what I'm doing. So this isn't the best way to adjust a hub, but it only has to move just a smidge. So I just put a wrench on each one of the lock nuts and tighten it. And you know what? That moved easier than I liked. So I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way, also known as the right way. And pop the dust cap off. I'm gonna grab a 15 millimeter cone wrench and put that on the cone. And grab my 17 millimeter and put it on the lock nut. I'm just going to tighten them together. Yep, so this side is the loose side, which is way easier to get at than this side. You have to pull that freewheel all the way off. I'm just going to leave it on. But just by doing that little adjustment there, things really loosened up. So now I'm going to go back to plan A and just tighten everything down together. And I'm going to adjust it so there's just the smallest little amount of play. And you can just feel it by grabbing the axle here and wiggling it back and forth. And check it in a few spots. I think we're good. So what happens is, is if you, when you, leave a little bit of play in the axle, when you close this skewer, it's going to compress the whole axle system together and those cones are going to move in on the bearings just a tiny bit and set the preload that way. I'm just taking this front wheel off, off camera right now, just because it's not that interesting. And we'll go through our initial cleaning sequence. I'm going to, this one you saw how dusty and kind of filthy it was back here. I'm going to start with just some good old-fashioned Dawn power wash. One thing you can do to make it easier to clean is if you push in the rear derailleur. It's a good way to release the tension on that rear derailleur cable. And you can do the same by pulling on the front one and releasing the front derailleur cable. And the brake cable's already loose and you get all your cables off. And now you have access to the whole frame. Makes cleaning a little bit easier. I'm going to take this bracket off now. All right, here we go. Very nice. Now that all the cables are loose everywhere, this housing's filthy. Now's a good time to lube your cables since everything's loose and accessible. I said that funny. Accessible. pieces of housing out of the way and getting some tri-flow. Just a thin layer is all you need. You can kind of let gravity work its way into all the nooks and crannies. And then as I complete them, I, I reseat them in their cable ends or cable stops. <laughs> housing stops, whatever you want to call them. Oh, 
call them what you will. cables are done. Shift cables. Now we're going to move the brake cables. And they call them shift cables. I'm going to call them derailleur cables. You know, but you don't call them like stop cables and brake cables. There's no discrepancy with those cables. Why do people park in driveways and drive in parkways? All right. This little rubber boot on the brake was all dusty. Not anymore. You know, if you keep your rag a little damp, then you can kind of wipe as you go. And just take care of things as you see them. You know, a lot of times these shift levers have dust in them. You can just take a rag and clean them up a little bit. A little bit goes a long way when it comes to cleaning. You know, the pedals just knock some of the dust and dirt off of them. You don't have to do a full blow spray down, polishing or anything, but just make them look somewhat decent. The more you touch the bike, the more you, you notice things you can improve on. All right, so things are cleaned up and lubed. Let's move on to the wheels quick. All right, with the wheels, I always put the rear wheel in the same way. Because I'm right-handed, I put the drives, drivetrain on this side, whenever it is, freewheel or cassette or whatever. Put it on that side so I have access to the hub on this side for cleaning. Big part of the wheels is cleaning. Again, I'm just going to use the power wash for this. This bike is just the right kind of dirty for power wash. Give a little squirt on the rim. And I just go back and forth one side and the other. And get that cleaned off. Wipe down the hub, the outside of the hub and the dust boot. Now I kind of do one of these with my hand and get my finger inside the hub body. The hub shell, that's what it is. The hub shell. Clean the inside of the wheel there. That's one of those spots where, you know, you expect it to be dirty, but if you clean it, it just makes the bike look so much better, I think. You know, you don't want dusty filth and stuff up on your handlebars, you know, anywhere in the cockpit that you see while you're riding it, for sure. But even the stuff that, you know, the nether regions and the, the hub shells and that kind of thing, you wouldn't normally think of. You know, I'm wiping down the spokes. Just take the extra minute and do it. That way, whoever ends up riding this bike can feel good about it. And why else would you ever ride a bike? I only ride a bike because it makes me feel good. I guess some people, you know, choose to make it a competition. And that can be fun, I suppose, and feel good. Some people commute by bike which I guess is better than driving most of the time. I mean, depending on the weather, for me. Not much of a fan of the cold. I have commuted in the winter, like when I lived in a city. I live more in a town, and if I wanna, if I do any kinda go in places, it's out of town, and generally use a car. All right, now we're gonna true the wheel. Oh, 
This one's not too bad. Some pretty obvious spots here. So this is a left side spoke and you can see it's rubbing so I'm going to loosen it just a little. The spoke nipples you know are basically nuts that come through um, from this side so it's righty tighty lefty loosey and I it's just second nature for me but I remember when I was learning that was something I had to get used to that it's not screwing in from this way it's screwing in from that way so I'm just loosening right now and then this one I'm going to tighten you know you if you want to pull it over you tighten a spoke and if you want to loosen you loosen a spoke And this is just fine tuning. Sometimes you get a wheel and the tension's way off and it's all screwy, but for most of these bikes that I'm doing, you know, just a touch up true is all it needs. And, you know, you're not gonna, it's like putting lipstick on a pig a little bit. You know, these are great bikes, but they're not race machines, you know, they're not fine luxury machines they're just good so just make them work good all right definitely good enough you can see i'm missing a valve cap i've got a bazillion of them it's actually a little crooked it's not too bad though Pull the rear one off and put the front one on. I Alright, I'm going to clean this wheel off camera. Okay, both the wheels are all cleaned up. I'm going to start thinking about shifting. So this shifter isn't really working too well here. It's, it's clicking down just fine. I'm not exactly sure about this, but my basic understanding... Let me get some light on this here. Jeez. My basic understanding is that you shift one way and all the guts are down here, and then the other way all the guts are up top. We're having a problem down here. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to take some uh, Citrix degreaser and I'm going to stick it, stick the no nozzle way up inside there and just kind of flush it out. Yeah, and you can hear it already. It wakes it right up. So and uh, I can tell there's something really going on here. Oh, it was the... Oh, yeah, okay. I just had a piece of housing back there that wasn't seated. And I just run back and forth a bunch of times. There's all kinds of little springs and pawls and levers and gears and stuff inside there and that just really exercises everything. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and duck under the camera here. Uh, well, that didn't really work. Alright. I'm going to try to get my nozzle in under this one. Flood that one too while I'm at it. And in case you're wondering, I just have cardboard on the floor. It kind of soaks all that stuff up. It's a concrete floor underneath. I don't worry too much about it. Every so often I throw it away and put new cardboard down. Put this rear wheel back on and we'll start working on drivetrain and shifting. Yep, so that skewer was still a little loose. 
I always, and I'll show you on the front when I put that one on, but I, get, I think the proper um, tension on a skewer is when the lever, or the open close lever, is just starting to push back when you're closing it. Um, when it's sticking straight out, you start feeling it pushing back. Everything seems to be moving just fine. There's a little bit of a hiccup in there. I don't know what that's about. It's a bent chain. But everything's really dry. Um, I'm just going to hook the brake up for now without adjusting it. Hopefully I don't need to adjust it too much. As long as the wheel spins. Yeah, then I can stop it from spinning. We're going to spray lube. Oh yeah, there was there's some uh, sticky links or something. Right there is a, a sticky link. I could see it. Yeah, right there. So I'm just going to work this one out by hand. You can kind of go back and forth. Maybe let the lubrication work. I don't know. Maybe that one's going to just be a problem. Yeah. We'll see. Let's, uh, I don't like to move pins if I don't have to. I think it'll come back to life just with some use. Let that lubrication do, do its thing. Um, another thing you can do to kind of hide the rust on that freewheel is give it a good spray. And that'll work its way in there too. Alright, let's zoom in best we can here on the drivetrain for the adjustment. The adjustment portion of the program. So now I'm in little and little. Yeah, and that sticky link is still a problem. That's going to drive me crazy. It's right there. I don't know, can you see it? I'm going to find my little, my favorite little chain tool. This chain tool, I'm going to use this outer one. I'm just going to put the chain in there and then just push the pin over, I mean, a tiny, tiny bit. So it's, it's finger tight right now. Move it that much, I mean, ever so slightly wasn't enough. Okay. Going through one by one and just watching the chain to see how well it shifts. And this one seems to be just exactly perfect. I already kind of looked when I was installing the wheel. I always kind of glance at the hanger to make sure that nothing's bent out of shape too badly. This one looks to be the original hanger. I don't think we've ever had any problems. There's no marks on the outside of the derailleur here to show any signs of trauma. You know, a lot of times these bikes get laid down and or there's crashes or they get banged up in a car rack or something. Bends the hangers. Okay. Take a closer look at the front derailleur. I'm in the big one, so big and big. It's rubbing a little bit, which is to be expected. So here we are in middle and big, so middle chain ring and big cog, and it's rubbing slightly, except at one spot, which tells me that I've got a bent chain ring. Yep. 
So that looks like I can just do manually. Oh yeah. It's just off slightly. So what I'm doing, I rest my forehead. Wonder if I can get any of this on camera. My my bent chain ring technique. Yeah, you can't really see my forehead. I don't want to move the camera too much. But if I rest my forehead on the saddle, then I can get one eye. I close one eye and I just move the chain ring around and I use the front derailleur as a guide and then I kind of find the spots that are not perfectly aligned and I just kind of beat it with a hammer one way. Now I'm resting my head on the top tube and oh yeah right here I'm looking down, I'm picking something on the floor to align the, each tooth. That's pretty good. So that was just looking at the ring. Then sometimes if you put the chain on it, yeah, it's way straighter. But still, it seems like the inside of the front derailleur cage, the inside cage, is rubbing if I'm in middle and big. So that tells me that the cable is just slightly tight. So up here on the shift lever is a little barrel adjuster and I'm turning it in to loosen the cable just a smidge. Now it hesitated a little bit to shift down. That is a limit screw adjustment and I'm just gonna turn it out. I mean, that was like an eighth of a turn maybe. And that'll help it, yeah shifting way better. Hopefully it doesn't drop the chain. I try to like shift fast or pedaling fast. Just really try to stress the system, push the limits because you never know the real world condition. Now I'm checking in the little cog in the middle ring for any kind of rub on this outer cage, the inside of the outer cage. And it looks to be good. There's actually a little room, little wiggle room there. So everything looks to be pretty adjusted. And based on what I saw on this bike, it's been ridden. Um, I would not be at all surprised to find out that this bike has been tuned up once. Um, it came from a good era. And, uh, you know, this bike's in good shape. Got a lot of cable pull here. I think I can start by tightening things a little bit. Not much, just a little, just a smidge. Good brake tension so far. It's a little bit, yeah, that feels good. Tighten it down good. Try to hide the cable, they don't always like to hide. Some do better than others. I mean, you can really get it out of the way if you absolutely have to. Sorry about my reach here. So this pad isn't aligned very well. The right pad. So I'm just gonna loosen it. Kind of move it up and center things. Look underneath. Make sure nothing's rubbing or gonna rub in the future. I don't think I lubed my pivots. That's always a good idea. Just if you drop some down there, and you know, just behind the washer and then behind it, kind of floods the whole system and gravity will pull it down. It's just I didn't have that pad adjusted. Yeah, there we go. Now things are in equilibrium and settled. a little off this side. I don't know, this is probably where experience comes in. I just kind of have a feel for it, but it's trial and error. I'm just going to show you putting this front wheel on. 
So right now the lever's closed. It's not letting me slide it into the dropouts. I don't think I really touched this. Yeah. So you get it up in the dropouts. I'm using, I'm using my knee to kind of push up on it. Well, it's in the stand. You know, generally if you're doing this on the ground, you can use the ground. Hey, hey check it out. Oh, more light. We got a kitty. Kitty. Okay. So now I'm um, holding the lever and I'm turning the right side. It's just like a big bolt with a nut on the end. And then this is a cam actuated quick release lever. And this is what I was talking about. See how it's just starting to fight back when it's sticking this straight out. I think that's the perfect amount of adjustment. I don't like the angle of that. I'm going to take a little bit of tension off. And then with this one, usually I like them going straight back. A lot of people have them going straight up, never forward because they can flip open. Uh, I think that's pretty good. But if it's resting on the ground, then it's pushing straight up into the fork ends, which is, you know, you want it seated all the way up into the fork ends. First thing we need to do to this front brake is lube this cable. So I use gravity to do that. I'm just going a couple drops at a time, holding everything straight. It's funny. My daughter just got home from school and I think she hears me talking and she's like, hello? She's looking for me. <laughs> Maybe she'll come running down here. All right. Part of bike farming is, you know, you have to live on the farm. So. All right, we're gonna lube our pivots. Drop some down in here again. Just let gravity do its thing. And then we'll connect it. I think she just figured it out. Adjust these brakes. So again, it's pulling more cable than I like. So that's tight. Let a little bit out. Now I, I don't tighten it down all the way. And then I just kind of lightly squeeze it. And it's pretty close to the rear brake, but it feels like it's a lo slightly looser. So I'm going to loosen that. Loosen the anchor bolt. Just tighten the cable a smidge. Hear the kitties scratching in the box in the background. Now that feels too tight. Well, so sometimes if you really squeeze the lever, you can, yeah, yeah, if you squeeze the lever, you can get things to settle and stretch a little bit. And that was the case here. So let me get that out of the way. That's fine for my standards. Man, that's pulling pretty evenly. I mean, that's totally passable. No rubbing. Check the brakes for alignment. You can kind of check them, make sure they're tight. Oop, wrong lever. Here we go. I love it. Absolutely love it. So as promised, I'm gonna find some goof off. So this stuff really works well when you have paint that's rubbed off onto your bike frames. And you can see there's some yellow paint, you know, it was leaned up against a post at some point. Locked to something probably. I just put a little bit on the rag there and just kind of rub it away. And let the chemicals do their thing. Now one thing that it does is it kind of takes everything off, so you got to be careful. It's going to have kind of a matte finish when you're done, which you can put back. I'm looking over on the other side now to 
see if it was leaned up on this side. Everything looks way cleaner on this side. So, to get the luster back, you can take your bike polish, wax, especially if you let this sit for a few minutes or a very long time, and then wipe it off with a clean rag. That'll really polish things. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let that sit for a sec while we do a few other things. I did a little of this before, but I'm just going to put a drop of T9 and, or Triflo, I mean. T9 works too. I like Triflo better. Put a drop in each one of the bolt heads, screw heads. Anything where you think water might collect. This rag is getting ready to be replaced. That looks pretty shiny. One of the final steps, I like to sit on the bike and kind of close an eye and just make sure everything's aligned. I put the front brake on and rock back and forth gently and feel the headset and kind of take the handlebars and go side to side. Everything feels pretty good there, so I'm just going to leave well enough alone. These handlebars seem to be angled back just a smidge. I don't really know how to explain what I like about certain handlebars and their angles. I just go by feel and get these where I want them. And actually, if I adjust the handlebars, that puts the levers at the angle I like. That I can say, I think it's 30 degrees is what I prefer. That's how I set them all up. And, you know, these handlebars look to be slightly askew. So I'm just going to loosen the stem bolts over here, the clamping bolts. I'm not going to touch the head cap because that will adjust the headset. And I'm just going to give it a tap. That's it. That is all it took. And I think that bike is done. All right, here we are. I'm going to kind of give you a tour like we did before. You can see how much cleaner the wheels are. Everything's good and shiny. Get in there and you can see the luster of the hub. You know, that free wheel doesn't even look rusty anymore. No more mud. You know, the brakes are nice and snappy. I like that. Still got a little bit of filth going under here. Whoop, there we go. Yeah. I mean, it's a used bike. You can see all the paint is off the logo there. Got that ugly lock bracket off. The nether regions are pretty clean. Got that chain issue worked out. The shifter is flushed out, working great. Fork's actually looking pretty clean. There's the front hub. Yeah, see, I mean, it's a clean bike. It's all lubed up and ready to go. Oh, there's some uh, filth underneath. I'm gonna wipe that off. Probably have to spray it. But all in all, that is gonna be a really great bike for a kid. Well, folks, that does it for this one. 
thanks for tuning in let me know in the comments um, you know, I've been doing a couple others where I don't do any narration I just do close-ups of stuff um, let me know how you like this one you know do you like it when I'm talking and rambling on and kind of explaining or do you like the just watching me work um, give me a thumbs up and a comment don't forget to subscribe thank you